All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about my EDC handgun setup. And I'm doing this video primarily because when I showed my setup off on some of the EDC channels that I frequent, at least in the social media atmospheres, I was asked, what is my EDC setup for my handgun? Not just what the handgun is. And so in this video, I thought what we would do is take a look at not just the handgun, not just the setup, um, but kind of blend everything together, talk about how how I typically EDC this very gun. So first off, let's just jump right into it and waste no time talking about what the gun is. So first off, it's probably the most important part of the actual setup or system, and that is the handgun itself. So first off, this is a Springfield Prodigy. This is a four and a quarter inch barreled version of that gun. And yeah, I chose the four and a quarter just because the frame length is still the same size, but the four and a quarter is just a little bit more manageable for actual appendix concealed carry. So that is some of the mindset behind that pick. In addition to that too, we also have a Vortex Viper on here. As I've mentioned in other videos, the primary reason the Viper is on here is because the out of box um, base plate for these handguns is only compatible with like three optics. Of course, the Springfield Hex Dragonfly optic is one of them, but I actually already had the Vortex Viper, so I figured I would actually just throw my Viper on here and make that work for me. And I'm not gonna lie, I actually will say I do like the profile of the Viper on this handgun as opposed to some others. However, it is worth noting at least with Springfield set up here, how it is set up. Um, you cannot adjust your up and down windage without removing the optic. So kind of a little bit of a bummer. Um, once again, this probably will not be a forever optic on this handgun, even though I do personally like the size and overall footprint of the optic on this handgun. Right, so aside from that, that is basically the setup for the handgun. Not much has changed. It's still basically a stock prodigy just with a red dot on it. All right, so next moving to the, um, okay, next moving over to the ammunition. The ammunition is pretty important and it does vary slightly. Currently, right now in this handgun, I have the Buffalo Bore 147 grain plus P9 mil ammo in this. This is what they call their outdoorsman. This is just what I have loaded in here because I've been going outside a lot. And so typically if I'm going on like hiking trails and stuff, nothing, you know, like too, too crazy, but if I'm going out on into trails or places where there might be bears, which there is practically almost everywhere here, I will typically load the handgun up with these. Outside of that, I also will um, frequently or rotate through um, some of Underwood Ammo's Extreme Penetrators, which are 115 grain plus P um, nine mil loads, or I will go for the, um, I wanna say it's Winchester, but I could be wrong, um, 124 grain plus P hollow points. So that's kind of my variations. The hollow points are definitely more for kind of city life, if you will. Um, however, like I said, these Hard cast lead bullets are definitely what I will usually rock if I'm going more into um, like less urbanized areas where the chance of encountering things like black bears is much higher. So this is the, the magazine, this is a stock 17 round magazine, so 17 plus one in the gun initially. So that's just as a standard. And then the offset or the secondary magazine is a 20 round magazine, of course, loaded with the same exact ammunition. So still the 147 grain um, hard cast lead bullets. All right, so now let's talk about the how I run it. So the primary way that I'm rocking this, at least for everyday carry, there are a handful of holster options I did pick up for this gun, um, depending on what you know kind of um, situation or environment I wanna run it in. But as far as EDC specifically goes, this is a custom tier one um, concealed or T1C um, holster. This is their Axis Slim. I just like their Axis Slim because it's a slimmed down version of the Axis holster and it's a little bit smaller, lighter, thinner, um, and there's just thinner Kydex to it as a whole. For me, I don't really find it to be too bad. It's not my favorite holster, to be honest. Um, I'm not the largest fan of tier one concealed just because I really think that their prices are kind of high for the product that you get. That being 
being said. Um, the product is just fine. Like this isn't a horrible holster, but I think it is a little bit pricey. This one was about $140 um, so when it was all said and done. And so that was, in my opinion, a little bit pricey, um, seeing that I really didn't like spec into any custom modifications. This is just a basic vanilla Axis Slim holster. So there is that. I did get it in, of course, purple and red. I just like the color combo. I thought it was fun and I like to be different with my holster colors. So that was what I chose for this guy. Now, as far as this holster goes, the primary reason why I selected a tier one concealed holster like I said, isn't because I'm the largest fan of them. Primarily, it's because Tier 1 Concealed was the only one, at least that I could find. There may be other holster makers out there. Um, feel free to link them in the description below or in the comment section, I should say, below um, if you know them. But they were the only guys that were making holsters f for um, a Springfield Prodigy that was also kind of a sidecar rig. So this has a, you know, additional attached magazine carrier to it. And so that was what I was looking for. I was looking for a sidecar styled um, holster for the Prodigy. And these guys were just the only ones that happened to make that. So that is why I ended up settling with this particular holster. Now, as far as what it takes to carry this holster. Obviously you can't just you know, pop a holster on your body. Typically speaking, if I'm wearing something like sweatpants or something that has a tie to it, you can pretty easily just pop this on. One advantage of at least this clip configuration, there are a few different types of clip configurations that tier one sells, but this is their like basic no frills, like stock setup. And with this stock setup, ironically, it's actually the best. So you can just pop this, you know, onto sweatpants and it will work just fine. So long as of course you tie your sweatpants tight enough for the gun not to droop because this is not a light package overall. But outside of that, I will typically, if I'm running like normal kind of cargo pants, I'll typically run my click belt um, and I have a two millimeter like duty belt and it's pretty thin but still very rigid um, nylon for a belt. And so I find that that works for me perfectly fine. So that is essentially how I run this rig um, and the entirety of the rig itself. So like I said, you got a tier one concealed Axis Slim holster here and my custom colors just picked out the colors that I wanted. And of course I have the magazine options for the handgun. So overall, it's a pretty good setup. I don't really have any complaints on it. Um, once again, the holster isn't like my exact favorite, but tier one concealed was the only one that was making a basically or essentially sidecar rig for the handgun that I have, the Prodigy. Fortunately, there's not a ton of concealed carry option or holsters out there for the Prodigy, sadly. It's really designed to be more of like a duty gun for like military and law enforcement. So there's a lot of like Safari Land holsters out there and other cool, you know, totally venerable holsters, but not really holsters that are concealable. Obviously those are all like outside the waistband type duty holsters. So anyways, uh, tier one concealed just happens to work out. Not my favorite holster brand, but it does work. And I don't hate these colors. Like I said, they're pretty cool. I thought it turned out pretty cool looking, so I can't really complain all too much in the end. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this. Like I said, I wanted to make this more as a kind of response video because I got quite a few questions on like, how do I carry this gun and how do I run this setup as a whole? So I figured it was worthwhile, you know, talking about um, and going over my setup. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.